Morning Trainiacs, we have got some low carb, high fat, fat adaptation drama out there online. There is an article out there that's been getting sent to me that people have been reposting. And these people have been saying, hey, as we've been saying, carbs are king. And this is really unfortunate because it's just another example of information out there that is showing one side of the story without actually looking at the other side of the story and really interpreting everything correctly. So with this being sent to me, I've been responding to a couple of our athletes on Team Trainiac. I think it's relevant to everyone here because no matter what your triathlon nutrition plan is, I think it needs to be approached very correctly. And there's a lot of information from the people that are selling the sugar water that say sugar is the best. And then a lot of information from people that are selling the keto stuff saying that keto is the best. And frankly, I think both of them are wrong. So this article in Outside Magazine, High Fat Diets Still Don't Boost Endurance, is written by Alex Hutchinson, who we've had on the podcast. I've got a lot of respect for him. I don't mean this as a slight to Alex. What I want to do is just give the full story here. And it's clear that some of the things that Alex says, he doesn't know about how this applies to triathletes. And I think that there's a lot of people that are taking this study and applying it to all sports, which isn't how you should be doing it. So let's just go through this with a couple of points. So the main point of this article is that Louise Burke at the Australian Institute of Sport published a study called Supernova, suggesting that three and a half weeks of an LCHF consisting of at least 75% fat and less than 50 grams a day of carbohydrates, the equivalent of just two bananas, turned elite race walkers into fat burning machines, but compromised their metabolic efficiency so that their overall race performance suffered. What's happening is people are taking studies like this with elite race walkers and applying it to everyone. And I want to add the context of how this applies to us triathletes. For starters, that 50 grams or less of carbohydrates is much, much less than the educated people who understand how performance is derived actually support. So this, I'm gonna to refer to Dr. Dan Plews, who is my personal coach, who is one of the most published guys in endurance sports research. He wrote this blog on EnduriQ.com saying, why a ketogenic diet is probably not optimal for performance in endurance athletes. So you might be saying, Plews, what the hell? You're the low carb guy. Why are you saying that the ketogenic diet is probably not optimal for endurance performance? Well, that's because he's the low carb guy. He's not the keto guy. He is all about performance and he believes that a certain amount of carbs are necessary. Let's get into this post here and we'll just go down to the meat of it. Explaining this, he says, what then is the formula we are after as a long distance triathlete? How do we maximize fat oxidation rates to spare the rate of utilization of our endogenous carbohydrate stores, essentially sparing our energy stores, whilst still starting the race with fully topped up muscle and liver glycogen concentrations? Basically, how do we make sure that we allow ourselves to burn fat while not restricting our body from actually being able to store carbohydrates? This is the metabolic status that we feel can be achieved by a non-ketogenic fat adaptation. So not keto, different. I'll explain what my approach is. The non-ketogenic fat adaptation is enabled by the sweet spot daily carbohydrate ingestion that drives up our body's capacity to make use of our fat stores as energy fueled during ultra endurance exercise like an Ironman triathlon without requiring the depleted liver glycogen stores necessitated for chronic ketosis. Like most things when it comes to performance, the devil is in the details. So what he's saying is instead of restricting yourself to less than 50 grams of carbs per day, look at more of a sweet spot of carbs per day. What I used to take, my sweet spot was around 130 grams average carbs per day. This was not a ketogenic diet. That's what a proper low carb approach is. Let's go back to the outside magazine. Now in that, what we just read from them is a team led by Louise Burke at the Australian Institute of Sport published a study called Supernova suggesting that three and a half weeks, remember that, three and a half weeks of an LCHF diet, and let's just stop there, three and a half weeks. Now I wanna show you a clip 
from Plues. Um, low carbohydrate, high fat studies with athletes have generally been short term and so may have failed to allow for proper adaptation. So what he's saying here is that three and a half weeks is not enough time to actually show what happens with this small lifestyle change of limiting your carbohydrates. I will attest to this. When I started going low carb, the first three weeks, miserable. And what Plews has actually found in his studies is that within the three week period, people's heart rate variability i.e. their body's readiness to train, how well they are adapting to the stresses that are going on in the world, it's a mess. So within three weeks, nobody is going to be well adapted to any sort of new training stimuli. If somebody said to you, hey, we're gonna go do low heart rate training, and low heart rate training is gonna change your race performance, and after three weeks you said, mm, it's not working. Does that mean that it doesn't work? No, it works fine. You have to take a longer amount of time to do this. Proof here is in another PLU study called the effects of a 12 week, much longer, very low carbohydrate, high fat diet on maximal aerobic capacity. Essentially, he studied, what if we took that three week study and extended it to 12 weeks, which is actually the period of time where I started seeing significant improvements. And that's what he says. He's like, you're gonna only start feeling good after about 10 weeks of this, if that. And the effects of this 12 week carb restricted approach here was actually the 12 week very low carbohydrate, high fat diet did not impair high intensity continuous or intermittent exercise lasting up to 25 minutes, nor did it impair maximal cardio respiratory performance or autonomic nervous system activity. Essentially what this is saying is that all of the people that want to bash a carb restricted approach, this study actually shows that if you go through the process, in fact, the people who were carb restricted had a better top end than the people who had carbs. Their ability to absorb training and adapt to things was actually improved. Now, coming back to the outside article, there's a quote here that says, one thing everyone agrees on is that going low carb, high fat will indeed ramp up your fat burning ability. Let's just sit on that for a little bit. And I wanna show you one study here called Maximal Fat Oxidation is Related to Performance in Ironman Triathlon. This is a study that was done on 61 athletes in Ironman Copenhagen, and what they found was three things definitely were associated with improved performance in the Ironman Triathlon. Number one, was a high VO2 max. Nobody argues that having a higher VO2 max improves performance. Second was a low body fat percentage. Again, nobody argues that a low body fat percentage improves your sports performance. The third, they found this definitively, was that a high ability to access fat as fuel improved Ironman performance. Yet, even though the first two are completely accepted and everyone says, yeah, it totally makes sense. The third one, people scream and say, no, I want my bagel. I want my bagel. I want my bagel. And I'm not saying you can't have your bagel. You just can't have it at certain times. No bagel, no bagel, no bagel, no bagel, no bagel, yeah. Now going back to the outside article, what they say in this study is that as athletes got a better ability to oxidize fat, which they didn't argue, the detriment was but they also got less efficient. They consumed an additional 7.1% of oxygen at their approximate 20K race speed and an additional 6.2% of oxygen at their 50K race speed. Now, is that a big deal? And the way that this is written, you would think, yes, it's a tremendously big deal. But I wanna show you some math here. So at the very high end, people are going to burn 1,000 calories per hour doing a triathlon. Now, let's say you increase that by 7.1%, the perceived detrimental effect to going low carb. Well, you're going to require 71 additional calories. And you might think, well, oh man, I really need to conserve that energy. Isn't that the point behind being fat adapted that you need to conserve your calories? Well, let's look at this. Most people who go with a carb restricted diet can get their fat burning up to 1.2 grams of fat burned per minute. Now on a traditional carb rich diet, that number is typically 0.4 grams of fat per minute. Now each gram of fat that you can access actually gives you nine calories. And if you multiply that by 60 minutes, you find 
that every single hour you get 432 additional calories. Now, sure, you might be burning 71 additional calories, but now you have 432 additional calories that you have access to. That's a pretty good trade-off because you are still net positive 361 calories. So all of these claims in this article are things that people who really dove into the low carbohydrate, the carb restricted approach to training, we agree with all of those findings. We're not refuting them. We're saying that that isn't the approach that athletes should have. In addition to that, one of the things that this article says is that unless you are going at a submaximal effort for longer than four hours, you should not be doing low carbohydrate because you're going to lose your top end. Well, we saw in Plu's study that you don't lose your top end if you go on longer than three and a half weeks. And how many age group triathletes, even at a sprint effort, are going absolute max effort? None. Sprint athletes, Olympic triathletes, half Ironman triathletes, full distance triathletes, we're all going at a paced effort that is sub-maximal. So exactly what they're saying in this is actually essentially proving the same argument that a lot of us carb-restricted athletes tend to support. So I'll make this very short and it's probably gonna be another video and make sure that you're subscribed if you wanna make sure that you see the actual methods that we will use in my timed carbohydrate approach. But the big broad picture is that before a low intensity workout, don't take carbs. By all means, take calories, but just keep it fat and protein so that you don't shoot up your blood, blood sugar, blunting your fat metabolism. Then the rest of the day, get into the sweet spot of carbohydrate timing, somewhere around 120 to 150 grams of carbs. But the thing is that it's gotta be a timed carbohydrate approach. It's not necessarily a carb restricted approach. It's certainly not a ketogenic approach. It's about timing your carbohydrates. And this is like basic stuff. If you look at any other athletic endeavor, bodybuilders know this, hockey players know this, anyone knows that when you have to work out hard, it's best to have carbohydrates, but you don't always have to be feeding in carbohydrates over and over. And that's where I think articles like this tend to confuse people that think it's as straightforward as you're either in the keto diet or you are in the carbs all the time and don't ever worry about restricting your carbs bucket, which, Neither one, I think, are correct. I think there's a lot of nuance and somewhere in the middle is where we've come up with our timed carbohydrate approach. If you want to learn about the timed carbohydrate approach, we just published our book, Triathlon Nutrition Foundations, which you can get at triathlonnutritionfoundations.com. I don't have any physical copies here because they won't ship them up here because of the Rona. But at triathlonnutritionfoundations.com, you can get the digital book, the audio book instantly. If you wanna get the hard copy, we have the link out to Amazon where you can get the hard copy version of that. It's a short read, lays out our timed carbohydrate approach and a race nutrition approach and a training nutrition approach. You can check it all out, but there's a lot more nuance than headlines would lead you to believe. So that's what I've got here today. I hope this helped you maybe clear some things up. And if you aren't already subscribed and you wanna see the video that is more in depth on the process that we use once we've got an actual book to kind of demonstrate things, hit the subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.